uh, welcome automotive enthusiast. Uh, a friend of mine called me and he says he's got a friend who had one of these uh, Sun 500s and uh, he had someone uh, do kind of a rebuild on it because the tube was weak and uh, they ordered one of these $200 kits uh, to replace the capacitors and uh, well that was a waste of money because the tube is uh, very weak. If we turn the lights off you could see it but uh, other than that it's kind of useless. Uh, kind of in a nice little clean room here. Better than I usually get to work in. This is really kind of a clean machine. I was, I was surprised that this is uh, still 6 volts. It has an internal power supply and uh, so we're going to be doing a rebuild on this and uh, we will be putting in one of these uh, dual flash units. Uh, this you can flip a switch and you can not only read uh, where the points open but also when they close and so you can read dwell directly off the scale. Uh, much more accurate than some of these. Uh, I started, I, I got this machine running, uh, and then, uh, well, internally, the uh, batteries for the dwell and tech were, well, the, the batteries were non-existent and the uh, holders were kind of bad. So I converted this to, let's open this up. I, some of these machines have uh, the batteries in series, others uh, they have to be floating, so I just basically have to interpret that every one, is, every one of these is floating, and uh, this one is floating. Uh, evidently, this one uses uh, two mercury cells in series for 2.6 volts, and so uh, yeah, you get this red and blue wire up there, that was the top little one. They put two batteries in series in a tube uh, for the 1.5 volt uh, D cell. I use one of these LM2596 and I attach this to a full wave bridge rectifier. It's just kind of an, an easy way to mount it. They don't have any mounting holes for these, but uh, if you use one of these, a bridge like this, which has a hole in it and uh, some really stiff leads, it stays in place. Uh, this is a five volt. Uh, 110 in and uh, 5 volts out. It's modified so it does uh, 2.7. Uh, that's beyond the capable uh, capabilities of uh, almost all of you. I suggest you just use another Elm 2596. Now you'll see there's an adjustment pot here. If you try and crank this down to the lowest voltage, uh, these will do up to 30 volts. If you try and crank down the lowest voltage, uh, this pot will be unstable and the voltage will jump all over. What I do is uh, across the two outside pins, I put a 100 ohm resistor for the 1.5 volt cell and uh, for the 2.7 volt cell if you have it. Some of these are one, two, you know, uh, in series they're 1.5. So whatever you have, but uh, if, it's, it's, if it's around 2.7, I do a 220 ohm resistor across uh, the second module. These modules have to be floating. Uh, that means that they can't share a common power source. So let's see what I got here. So, you know, you can use a little transformer like this, but uh, most all of you have had uh, more than a few uh, cell phone adapters and uh, a number of cell phones. Those 5 volt sources are nice to uh, power these modules. Like I say, this takes DC in. The bridge rectifier makes the AC into DC. Uh, so you could feed one of these 5 volt uh, 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 wall warts right into one of these. And you'd need one for each LM2596. So if there's any questions, we'll go over that at uh, some other point but uh, I had to adjust this thing up it was drifting all over the place eventually I just shorted out this pot and uh, that seems to have solved 
some of the problems. I had to replace all the resistors. There were only about six of them. And uh, some of them had gone like 50% in value uh, from what they were. Uh, they're the old carbon ones. And with carbon resistors, you know, if you heat up the lead to do some soldering, uh, they'll change even more. So it was just easier to replace them. There was one up here, one there, and I think uh, three down here. There's one up here, 100 ohm, but uh, I didn't bother with that. But it seems to work pretty well. I was kind of surprised that on the cow, uh, you know, this is some old alligator clips, and these were pretty dirty. And you short these two together, and uh, for the calibration, it's you really need a good contact because just varying these uh, mechanically around a little bit, you could never get the cowl to get in uh, the right place. So, like I say, I've adjusted this up and have made it so uh, no operator can uh, take it out of adjustment. And it shouldn't go out of adjustment unless... Uh, the, you know, the power sources uh, go out of the way. But like I say, with the dwell flash, we'll be able to read the dwell directly. So in the dwell flash, we replaced, replaced the uh, standard neon tube uh, with this 10 watt LED. And this gets bolted on right to the lens. So uh, there won't be a lot of side flashing all over all the light will come out right where the arrow is through the lens. So let's see. Let's see. Back here, this is the module. Oh, this is the, like I said, this is the first one I've ever worked on, which had the internal supply. And uh, up here, they did a couple diodes to replace the tube. And there's a resistor in series that's, uh, I measured 47 ohms. And the 5 volt filament, since you're not using the tube anymore, I use that to supply that one LM2596 module with the, with the bridge rectifier. Masking tape, the choice of professionals. But all this is going to get ripped out. So uh, for now, uh, that's the introduction of uh, what we're going to do to rebuild this thing. They have the uh, condenser tester, but evidently that's been disconnected for a while. I don't know if that works. I don't think it's anything useful. Uh, I've taken a lot of these. Uh, most of the uh, module, the sun machines I've worked on are like this. You know, they have a cracked meter face. The meter has been damaged, and you have to... Uh, you know, you spend a lot of money replacing the meter, uh, which is impossible to get. I just take and put digital electronics behind it. You know, I, I take a piece of aluminum, paint it black, uh, put the digital meter in here. It keeps the existing look, but uh, it's far more accurate. I mean, really, all this electronics is 70 years old. These wafer ship switches are very brittle. If you damage one, you're not going to get another. And all this electronics is really just shit anyway. So it's uh, really best to scrap it. This is more for cosmetic quick look. I would never trust any of this. So uh, we're going to go on to part two in a moment.